Just start from the beginning. The beginning! <laughs> Fucking beginning. I think I'm near the end. One day, on this particular day, I'd rung my mum. I'd always go around there two or three times a week and every time she'd give me a loaf of bread. You know, I didn't fucking need all this bread at the end, until like now. But anyway, she'd always bake me a loaf. And I rang her up just before I was going to go and see her. And I said, hello, mum. And she said, hello, son. And all this all this business. She goes, oh, I've got something for you. Because I know what that was now. I don't know. You know it was a fucking loaf of bread. Anyway, so I got me fussed round there. And um, I had a... I knocked on her door, right? I smashed on her door. And I couldn't get any answer. So I'm shouting through the letterbox. No answer. And I just spoke to her about an hour and a half before. It's fucking strange. I see the neighbour and I said to the neighbour, has is, is Iris been out to get a paper or something? You know? She goes, no, no, I haven't seen her, I haven't seen her. I said, oh, fucking hell. And then suddenly I've got this feeling in my gut. You know that feeling where you just fucking know something's wrong? Yeah. It was like overwhelming, you know? Anyway, so I fucking ran at the door. I fucking barged it with my shoulder. I kicked off the fucking lock, opened the door and bang. Oh! What? That she was at the bottom of the fucking stairs. And I, I knew she was dead. She was like grey and cold. You know? It, it, she, she, she was just like a shell, you know? And my mum wasn't in there. Like, you know, she'd gone. But still to this day, I don't know where she's gone. She sort of left. <laughs> I looked out into the kitchen, right? She's laying at the foot of the stairs. I look out into the kitchen and guess what was there? A fucking loaf of bread wrapped in aluminium foil for me. Yeah. Fucking hurts. I remember getting that loaf and walking out the flat and going to a green just opposite her, right? And I unwrapped that loaf and it was still warm and I remember just digging out in the middle, you know, the soft bit. Yeah. I'm just fucking eating it and I fucking remember tears were streaming down my fucking face and I couldn't fucking believe the dilemma I was in. And on the way home that day, I remember buying a white loaf of bread and I sat here, this very spot, and I just ate the bread. And with every mouthful, uh, it eased the fucking pain of that death of my mother. You know, it eased it. It was like I associated that with her and I just stayed in and then I was eating more and more of this white bread white bread white bread I was on about fucking five loaves a day well, it's more now but I mean, that was at the beginning fucking five loaves a day just eating it trying to get some fucking mm, 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 comfort and I used to put a fucking loaf in my pocket and walk across the fields. I don't know if you know this area. Do you know this area at all? No, I don't. Well, there's a fucking an industrial state there and on it, there's like this big sort of um, factory, I don't know, bakery, but it does um, like wholesale. You know, it gives it, it sells the bread to Tesco's and fucking yes. yeah, Sainsbury's and all that bollocks. And anyway, I was standing there and what could I fucking smell? But, my mother's house. It was just wafting in the air. So I stayed there and I just had a cigarette, fucking watch the world go by with this fucking lovely smell constantly going, breezing my way, you know? Yeah. I must have stayed there for about two or three hours, you know, two or three hours, just feeling at peace in a way with my mum, you know? 
Anyway, so one particular day when I was over the industrial state and I was just like smelling the waft of bread on my own. I see this geezer with a white coat on, big old geezer, like, and uh, it, it, he worked there, he was obviously worked there, he was probably having his fag break, he had a cigarette on and that. And I didn't talk to him, he talked to me, he said, but what are you doing here? He said, I've seen you around there a bit, he said, you just sort of hang around, don't you? I said, well, I just like to go out for a walk, I said, across the field, and I sort of end up here. And I said to him, what are you going to do with that bread? He said, I'm putting it in the incinerator. I thought, oh, for fuck's sake, don't do that. I said, look, I said, don't do that, mate. I said, I'll give you 15 quid for it. Uh, anyway, I did say to him on the first day that, look, I haven't got the 15 pound on me, but I'll bring it tomorrow. And I'll bring you 30 quid, and then you give me another bag. But I need to take that bag now. He went, all right, he goes, I'll trust you, he said. But he said, look, I'm risking my job here. No, I'll, I'll come back, I'll come back. And he said, well, keep it quiet, like, you know, like fucking working out of cover, all that bollocks, I don't know what I was doing. Next door, there's a skanker. You know what I mean? I think that's a fucking crack house next door, to be honest with you. Like, you know what I mean? He's, I don't understand ethics. I don't understand, like, this fucking chemical buzz. Uh, fuck all that business. I'll stick with this fucking safe stuff. And anyway, so, uh, he, got, he gets his check one week, like, his benefits. I'll get my benefits the next week, you know? So when he's short, I help him out. The next week, when I'm short, he helps me out, you know? It's, it's yeah. like a little arrangement. And he's reliable in that sense. Or he was reliable in that sense. You know, and so everything's great. Now, one particular day when I was going to go and see my good old banker supplier, it was his turn to give me a little bit of a, you know, a little, yeah. little, you know, a little bit of help. Anyway, so he didn't come in. Normally he always knocks on my door and I knew he was getting his money that morning, all right? And he always knocks on my door because he knows the next week he's going to need it. So it's yeah. in his interests. Yeah. I goes out, I thought I'll fucking knock at his door. Anyway, his door's open. Right, it's like my flat. You know, first thing you see when you come in, it's the bathroom. And the selfish bastard was lying on the floor dead. Anyway, you know, you know what I felt at that time, seeing him? I just felt, you wanker. You wanker. How could you cash your fucking cheque if you're dead? Where the fuck? Am I going to get the money for my fucking bread? I mean, is that selfish? Well, well it fucking is, isn't it? He's dead. Great. Again, just like my mum, mate. Just like my mum. Anyway, so now I've got to go to the baker. And I've got to say to the baker, I haven't got the money. But my money was coming two days later, all right? So I said, no, I haven't got it. I said, but... In two days' time, I'll give you 45 quid. So it's three days' supply, right? And he went, you fucking better, he said. So anyway, so I get the bread, and lo and behold, <laughs> my fucking money didn't come, did it? Oh, God. Oh, I've all that fucking times not for it to come. And I'm shaking like a fucking leaf because I need the fucking bread. So I've got a bit... Approach this baby and tell him I haven't got his three days money, you know, and he's a yeah. big old fucking beast, you know So I goes down there and I said look, I said you ain't gonna believe this. He's standing there with my day supply I said I haven't got 45 quid on me. I said because my money hasn't come And he just looked at me and he said you're taking me for a fucking mug And he went bang and he smacked me straight in the face. So I went down like a ton of bricks, fucking nose bleeding, he caught me lit, everything. Came home with no bread. So I went around a flat, right? And I managed to get like uh, some coppers and uh, a bit of shrapnel together. Uh, I went over the shop and I managed to get a white loaf. I managed to get a white loaf, all right? But this has got to last me the fucking day. What am I gonna fucking do? You know, the panic. Yeah. <sighs> fucking panic. So I... You're not gonna fucking believe this one. Come on, I've got a slice of bread. And I crumbled it into the newspaper. So I've got a hammer and I knocked the fucking shit out of it, all right? I sat here, I've got a Rizzler, I put a little bit of tobacco in a Rizzler. Put the crumbs of the bread in the Rizzler. Rolled it up. I fucking smoked it. I 
Fuck a joint. What the fuck am I coming to, eh? And you know the funny thing was, I got such a fucking surge off that. I swear to God, I could see my mum sitting in the fucking corner. It was fucking nuts. And that's the whole fucking point of this. The whole fucking point of this is that I'm going nuts and I can't get any fucking help because no one will fucking believe me why I'm fucking addicted to this fucking shit. Could you sit there? You can't fucking help me, can you? You don't. You look at the look on your face. You know you can't fucking help me. I fucking need some fucking help, but I can't get it. Fuck off! Get out! Get out! Get out of my sight! Get out of my fucking sight before I do something! Just get out! Get out! Go! Go! Fuck off! <coughs> Fuck off! Fuck off! I'm trying to help you. Bollocks! Oh fuck! 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 Fuck you fucking break! Oh fuck you, you fucking bastard! Fucking shit! Thank mm -hmm. you.